Another hard question, and people often ask it, and the church does have some clear answers to this. It's, you know, can all people be saved? Can non-Christians be saved? Can non-Catholics be saved? Some people ask that question. Um, let's start with the conviction that what St. Paul says in Romans is correct, and it's that all people are saved in Jesus Christ. So we believe that Jesus in his death and resurrection is the source of salvation for everyone who ends up being saved. But then the distinction is, can people be saved in Jesus Christ without even necessarily expressing direct faith in him? And this is where the Catholic Church would say, God creates people and offers every person sufficient grace to be saved. So every single person has the opportunity to accept salvation the proverbial example is always somebody who has never had Christ preached to them. Let's say they've never been presented with the gospel or with the truth of the faith or with the person of Jesus. Church would say that if that person is open to truth as it has been revealed to them, if they seek God as God is revealed to them, if they seek to be a good person as they understand that to be, that there is sufficient operative grace there that if that person was presented with the fullness of Christ, they would say yes to it. So in a sense, there's a baptism of desire, as the church would express it. Um, Second Vatican Council talks about that the fullness of the Church of Christ subsists in the Catholic Church, but that elements of the Church of Christ exist in other bodies as well. You know, so we think of um, Protestant churches who have a deep faith in Jesus, a deep knowledge of the Bible. We do not share a communion with them because we are not in full union of faith, and yet they are Christian. And then we think of the Jewish people, our older brothers and sisters in the faith. And St. Paul himself says that God has not reneged on that original covenant. So Catholic Church would say that the Jewish people will find salvation through observance of their covenant. And we think of um, widening circles, you know, we think of Muslims, we think of Hindus, we think of Buddhists. You know, further away from that fullness of revelation of God, but still affirming some belief in transcendence. What about somebody who claims atheism? I love talking to atheists because I always want to get at what they think, what makes them tick. And so often I'll ask them, what's your definition of God? And it's usually some very warped, dark image of this force that just manipulates us, uses us, um, overpowers us. And I always say, if that was my definition of God, I'd be an atheist too. So oftentimes even atheists think they're atheists, but in the end they just need the truth presented to them. None of that is to say that our endeavor to evangelize or to bring people into full communion with Christ and the church should be diminished. It simply means that God's grace is operative um, substantially in the church, but can also operate as God pleases. So to believe that God has created each person with the possibility of salvation would be a fundamental tenet of our faith. Can we reject that salvation? Can we refuse that offer? Can we live our life so definitively cut off from God that in the end we're not received into life? Yes. And that's always been a teaching of the church. But that's the mystery of judgment that only God can pronounce on every human life. Um, God is God, so that's his job. Uh, we don't need to judge others. We simply need to lead them as best we can to the Lord as we ourselves are being led to the Lord.